Well, there are little signs of conflict in Myanmar's Rakhine state that are coming to an end anytime soon. The state leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, has already blamed the iceberg of misinformation for the ongoing conflict. And now to add insult to injury, social media giant Facebook says it has suspended the account of violent groups known as the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army. Here's the story. But the move by Facebook has come under criticism by Rohingya activists who say their voices against alleged atrocities are being silenced. The social media giant, however, reasons that the suspension is keeping in line with Facebook's policy of banning content by or in favor of groups engaged in terrorism, organized violence or crime, mass murder or organized hate. We want Facebook to be a place where people can share responsibly and we work hard to strike the right balance between enabling expression while providing a safe and respectful experience. In response to the situation in Myanmar, we are carefully reviewing content against our community standards. Facebook also placed the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army, or ARSA, on its list of dangerous organizations. This is the same insurgent group that attacked police posts on August 25th, killing at least 12 security personnel. The attack triggered a crackdown which led to an exodus of more than 400,000 Rohingya from Myanmar. Facebook also says it was not asked by the Myanmar government to take down the account of violent Rohingya. Facebook says its action was voluntary. Bureau Report, we on. Joining us on the discussion tonight, we have Pranesh Prakash, a policy director for the Center for Internet and Society from Bengaluru. Pranesh, great to have you again on the program. My question to you is, did Facebook get it right? Does Facebook have the right to do such a thing when it comes to groups, especially such a refugee group that's already been dealing with a lot of crisis? So uh, a few things here. Uh, one is uh, Facebook claims uh, that they weren't contacted by the Myanmar government about this, that they did this on their own. Uh, that seems to be belied by actual, uh, you know, postings of correspondence by the Myanmar government on Twitter and on Facebook, where uh, a spokesperson for the government actually uh, claims that, that Facebook acted on their uh, request. So uh, first, it, it's not very clear whether Facebook is, is telling the whole truth in this. Uh, secondly, the question before us is not just about uh, ARSA uh, being uh, declared as a dangerous organization and, and Facebook uh, blocking their account. It is also about all other forms of uh, censorship that Facebook is currently uh, undertaking in relation to uh, Myanmar and the Rohingya Muslims. Uh, so different kinds of words seem to be on on uh, Facebook's uh, ban list, including the word for uh, local word for Indian. Um, and there's a detailed report about this on Global Voices, uh, which has which has been tracking Facebook censorship in Myanmar. And what's surprising is that this censorship seems to be one way. It doesn't seem to be affecting all hate speech that is uh, available in, in Myanmar on, on Facebook. For instance, uh, many kinds of posts which attack the Rohingya right. and, and uh, which seem to, and, and this has been going on for a while, it's not something new. Uh, and, uh, you know, posts by, by prominent people like uh, Virathu, uh, who is a, a leader of, of uh, monks there, uh, haven't been censored by Facebook, even though they advocate for uh, genocide, right? And so, if it's one-sided, uh, uh, one-sided censorship, one has to ask questions about whether uh, whether Facebook is doing the right thing or not. All right, Pranesh, we'll come to you in just a bit. But continuing the conversation to get a little bit more perspective when it comes to the plight of the Rohingyas. In fact, just recently, the Buddhist protesters in Myanmar threw petrol bombs to block the shipment of aid relief to Muslims in the Rakhine state. The United Nations has accused the military of ethnic cleansing before police fired shots to disperse the protesters. Here's that angle of the story. 
what was supposed to be a road to relief and recovery quickly turned into one with violent clashes. Hundreds of protesters tried to stop Red Cross workers loading a boat with relief supplies for the Rohingya Muslims. Protesters carried sticks and metal bars and even threw petrol bombs to stop the relief workers. Around 200 police officers had to then disperse the protesters by firing shots in the air. The aid shipment was headed for the Rakhine state after insurgent attacks started last month which prompted a military backlash. The ongoing violence has forced more than 420,000 Rohingya Muslims to flee to nearby Bangladesh. But out of fear, many still remain in Myanmar and hide without food and basic supplies. Tensions between majority Buddhists and Rohingya Muslims have simmered for decades in Rakhine, but now have exploded into violence with the end of decades of military rule. Myanmar's government says 400 people have been killed so far. Rights groups say the army and Buddhist vigilantes have driven out the Muslim Rohingya population by burning down their villages. But Myanmar rejects the accusation. The crisis has sparked international condemnation and raised concerns about leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Remember, U.S. President Donald Trump called for swift and strong action to end the violence. But Suu Kyi talked to the nation this week, condemned the abuses and said all violators would be punished, but did not address the ethnic cleansing raised by the United Nations. Bureau report, we on. Let's bring Pranesh back into the conversation. Pranesh, uh, following up on this, sometimes social media can play a very uh, pivotal role when it comes to situations like this world disasters, crisis. You know, we know Facebook sometimes will launch its safety check feature. And of course, a few years ago, when it came to the Arab Spring, social media was instrumental in getting people really out there and active. Now, when it comes to that, it really is a fine line, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or whatever platform. But how important is it for social media sites like that to really draw that balance and not openly take sides because right now it looks like activists feel like that Facebook isn't being fair. Absolutely. So uh, it's not just a matter of, of uh, whether private companies are being fair or, or not. Um, it's also being seen to be fair. They have to show evidence that they're fair. There is something called the Manila Principles on Intermediary Liability, which uh, a number of groups uh, hundreds of groups uh, throughout the world signed on to uh, in 2013 and those actually provide in 2014 I beg your pardon those provide guidelines on private censorship yeah. so of course we need Packaging. censorship uh, we need censorship sometimes and uh, censorship itself isn't always bad but uh, the censorship needs to be responsible. And while we can hold governments responsible when they, uh, when they flout international uh, human rights uh, law and, and principles, right. uh, it's much tougher to do so with private entities like Facebook. So uh, despite the existence of things like the Manila principles, which seek to provide clear guidelines on, on how private companies like Facebook ought to go about decisions like this, including those around transparency. For instance, Facebook has not justified its, its decision uh, on, on banning ARSA, on banning certain kinds of words on its platforms. And so it's always uh, that kind of transparency is required. And it's always wise for all of us to remember that we uh, essentially are on other people's property uh, while uh, while we communicate on, on Facebook. So we shouldn't think about Facebook as some kind of free speech haven. We shouldn't think of it um, as, as a place that uh, allows us to, to express what we want. We should always remember that it essentially is on, on a private company, uh, company servers that we are building, you know, foundations of, of speech. And that is not necessarily a good thing. And um, we sh uh, and, and, and so, People should not depend solely on Facebook to be able to exercise their, their rights of, uh, of free speech and assembly. Absolutely. Very interesting line there when it comes to social media and the powers and the powers of B. Pranesh, thank you so much for all of those updates on the Rohingya story.